Hey, what's up everybody? It's Pete from Comanche Surf Casting. Just want to welcome everybody back. Uh, this episode, we're going to talk mainly about uh, the end of our spring and the start of our summer season. As we all know, our fishery is in, uh, is in really bad shape um, for a couple different reasons. Uh, and there's no point in getting into that right now, but just try and practice catch and release when you can. Um, we try and do the same. Uh, we've all talked about changing some different stuff on how we fish our plugs, barbless, uh, reducing the amount of hooks on our plugs, and also keeping the fish in the water as much as possible. Quick picture, and uh, back she goes. Actually, the biggest fish that I've probably ever caught, ever. All I have is one blurry picture of, but it's more important that she's swimming and uh, still healthy. The end of our spring season started off really slow. We like to hunt the it, different inlets up and down the coast and try and catch those fish either coming out of the Chesapeake or coming out of the Hudson. And, uh, they're usually pretty hungry and they use the inlets like we use rest stops on the highway. They stop off for a tide or two, they nose up into the current and they eat all the bait that's coming out. Uh, our top producers are the same every single year. Um, it's always super strike stuff, uh, be it bottles or darters. I know a lot of guys did really well this year with uh, with yellow on some of the sand beaches. Um, that seems to be that seems to be a pattern every year. So there's always super strike darters and bottles in our uh, in our bag. But make sure you up the uh, if you're hunting for big fish, make sure you you bump up your terminal tackle. We use 5x mustads, uh, the 3.0 size. They're real hard to straighten. They do straighten every now and then. Actually, Chris straightened one last night. But as long as you bump them up, you have a much better chance of getting that fish of a lifetime. One of the fun parts of the transition of the spring into the summer is when the bluefish show up. And this year we had a nice run of bluefish along the beaches. They're fun to catch. You catch them during the day and you don't have to spend your nights with no sleep hoping for one or two bites from a bass. Uh, now some people think bluefish are like super easy to catch. And when they're in a full-blown feeding frenzy, yeah, they'll eat anything. But a lot of times, it, the bluefish are there, and you don't even know it. Um, and they get finicky like bass. So uh, I want to just go over a couple things that we use to increase our catch volume uh, when we're fishing for bluefish. Uh, first off is we started fishing a new lure this year, and it's uh, Patrick Seville's from a band of anglers. It's called the dart spin. It's probably the most durable soft plastic you could ever fish. We use it in Florida to catch jacks and snook and tarpon and then we brought it up here and really put a hurt on a bass early in the season. Fish are notorious for destroying lures and normally when they're around you put your soft plastic away. Well this season was the opposite. The dark spin held up to the bluefish throughout the entire tide. I was catching anywhere from 5 to 15 pound bluefish all tied with the same soft plastic lure. The other thing that's great about the dart spin is it's got a small blade on the back that flashes and definitely attracts the fish attention. You'll get more violent strikes using the dart spin tipped on a bucktail than I did with pork rind or curly tails. Uh, they definitely think it's food. You know when a fish thinks your lure is food because they don't bump it or grab it. They, they, they crush it. And by using uh, the soft plastic from fishing for the bluefish, you don't have to worry about treble hooks. You don't have to worry about the thing shaking its head and putting a hook into your hand. Uh, it's just a quick release and, and the fish is back in the water. Uh, that makes a huge difference if the fish only push in for like 10 or 15 minutes and you're only going to get a couple casts into the school. Uh, so it really increases your catch volume. I'm uh, super impressed with this lure and can't wait to see what, what happens when they come out with the bigger version. Uh, we start traveling a lot for fishing. Uh, we're always looking for the coolest, clearest water that we can find. Uh, and it seems like with the weather patterns changing, that's moving further north uh, every year. Uh, we like to fish Montauk. We like to fish Block Island. We like to fish the Cape. So we're always we're always on the road this time of year around the moons looking for the biggest fish yeah. possible. Uh, our favorite different salt classics to fish are we fish, we fish Logos, we fish Mega Shads, and, uh, and Hogies. Uh, the cobra baits work oh, really well early in the year one. for us. Um, I don't fish them this time of year that much. Uh, I stick with the sluggos and the and the mega shads most times because they cast a little bit further. Um, they don't get held up in the wind, and you can, you can really 
really punch them out there when you have to. Uh, we usually fish anywhere from three quarters to ounce and a half. Uh, we use the Magic Tails or Joe Bags. Either one of them are great. They have a, a soft plastic hook holder so that your plastic doesn't come off. And they have a big diesel strong hook, which is the most important part because you don't want to get straightened out. Um, in the following video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how we compensate for fish destroying our soft plastics so it doesn't become a real expensive fishing trip. Like to fish a lot of rig deals. Um, we'll tandem rig them if you want to fish them a little higher in the water column. All right, we also attach them to the jig heads uh, and fish them low. They're uh, absolutely killer. And in the past, uh, you see, we keep them in uh, paintball pods. They're 150 round paintball pods. You can order them from anybody. You just attach a carabiner, you clip it to your belt. You can keep your two eel jigs or your eel skins in there. And uh, when you come home at night, you throw them in the freezer, and the girlfriend or the wife doesn't. Uh, doesn't know any better and your car doesn't stink. If you have any questions on how we rig the stuff up or what we use in certain particular cases, uh, we're more than happy to help. This is just some of the stuff that works for us. Everybody fishes a little bit different and uh, each year we kind of tweak what we're doing for the conditions that we're in. Uh, I hope you guys all have a healthy and safe summer season. Uh, be careful of all the sharks. They're out there. Kind of scary. Um, but uh, practice catch and release when you can. There's nothing wrong with taking a fish for the table, uh, but I would try and let the big ones go. We, we don't have a lot of these fish left. So take care and uh, see you out there.